As I'm sure plenty of you already know, Windows 11 on the original Surface Duo just got a really, really big update. And in this update, one of my biggest problems with playing around with this has been completely solved, and that is the prevalence of a lot of graphical glitches while you were just trying to do you know, whatever it was you were trying to do. There were all sorts of these like lines and glitches going on. That problem, like I said, has been solved. I covered this in a prior video, but what I did not cover in a prior uh, video is what happens now if you take the fact that that is now working relatively well and you try and do some gaming with something like Steam here. How is the gaming performance on Surface Duo running Windows 11. So really quickly in this video, I'm going to show you three games that I have tested and they're going to sort of be more and more impressive, I think, as they go. And they're going to culminate in something that is really, really bizarre to actually see uh, happening in real time. And then we'll talk about it once that is done. Okay, so game number one here is a game called Dinkum, which is sort of like Animal Crossing mixed with Harvest Moon set in Australia. In case you were skeptical about this or whatever, this is being played uh, via a wireless Bluetooth controller. That's redundant. An 8-bit do SN30 Pro, or N30 Pro actually. And uh, as you can see here, it is more than a little bit framey. I don't know that this is entirely playable in its current state. Although, we also have to keep in mind that I wasn't able to actually change the resolution that this game was running at. It just wasn't giving me any other options. So it was running at native resolution, which is pretty high resolution. So I think if I were able to drop this down to like 720p, this would absolutely, absolutely be playable. This would be no problem at all in the state that it's in where I can't really do much of that. I'm, I'm struggling to be able to like do what I want to do just because there's a lot of uh, lag and, and, and sort of jankiness there, which makes something simple like catching a butterfly here uh, quite difficult to perform. But I think that you can see what kind of potential there is for the performance with just a few small tweaks. Put it in tent mode, set it up. This would absolutely be playable. This next game is called Spelunky. It is a 2D uh, platformer where the, the world or the map is randomized which with each playthrough, with each level. Um, I've not played it in a good while. I think this is actually Spelunky 2. Um, so you can see me kind of being hesitant here and just not knowing exactly what button does what. I've never played it on this controller before, so that was a new experience as well. But, you know, where Dinkum was running between like 8 and 15 FPS at low settings at too high of a resolution, granted, Spelunky 2 is like locked at 60 FPS. No problems at all running this game. You can see that it is letterbox, which run in 16 by 9. I did not check the internal resolution, what it was rendering at, because I didn't have a reason to. It was running so well. I didn't even didn't even think to look. Now the next game though is the original version of the Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim. And for this one, there was a little bit of work that needed to be done. So trying to load it up, it didn't want to play because I did not have any sort of audio device. So I grabbed a Bluetooth speaker and paired that to it and that did allow it to run. In terms of resolution, there was some weirdness there as well, changing between the aspect ratios. It gave me 16 by 10, 16 by 9, and another one standard 4 by 3 or 5 by 4, and some of them were blank, and I think it wound up going with 1800 by 1125 because that's just what was working. I also had to go in and disable all of my mods. Something was screwed up there and it was causing it to crash at the splash screen. But eventually, as you can see, not only did it run, I was on low settings at 1800 resolution, 1800 by 1125 or yeah, 1125. It ran pretty well. And again, if there were some more tweaks here, we could get this thing down to 720p you could probably pump this thing up to high and it would be absolutely 100% playable. And I'm actually going to let you guys see this a little bit bigger because it's so impressive. I'm about to go get into a, a fight here. And uh, again, I'm using a controller and I don't usually use a controller for a game like this. But then here, here I go, I'm going to run in and it doesn't look like I was actually doing any damage to this guy at first, maybe just a little bit. But I'm able to fight and swing around and, and, and play Skyrim. So, I mean, this is, this is something that is really really impressive and you can see in the top left corner there 37 fps i'm hanging over 30 fps at way too high of a resolution so again what would happen if you took this 
had some tweaks there and you're able to lower that resolution to a more reasonable place, what would happen over time as, you know, these drivers get better and better for Surface Duo? You know, keep in mind, if you're a PC gamer, you know as well as I do that, you know, every time you look at something like GeForce Experience, you've got a new graphics driver update that's going to improve performance. Well, that's going to be true of this as well. As these drivers get better and better, performance may improve more and more. And again, we're not that far off from this actually being a legitimately pretty decent experience. You know what I mean? Like take this and put it into tent mode, set it down, and you've got your own little kickstand to run these games on in an incredibly, incredibly small form factor. I was just playing Skyrim on this. I played Skyrim on that. How insane is that? Massive kudos to Gus and the team working on this. Incredible, incredible work. I would love to know if any of you guys have installed this. What games have you tested? Let's talk about it in the comments down below. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe on your way out. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.